Well, hello everybody. This is David Gardner and um, this is August 1st. Welcome to August, the August 1st installation of the Williamsburg Strathspey and Real Society live stream. And we've got a really good group of uh, tunes this week. Um, I'm really, really excited about this week's uh, set of tunes. Um, the random number generator did a good job for us this week, so I'm really looking forward to that. So, um, get started here. Let's uh, all get a get an A for a for a tuning, so that we can. That's our A. Let me double check my A. It's the same A. Hi, Anne. It's good to see you. Um, so, um, the, we've got some good tunes. We've got a good variety of tunes, too. We've got, we've got Strath Spays and Reels, as usual, but we, thought we also have um, a nice air that we're going to be working on. And we're also going to be working on a hornpipe, um, a very famous hornpipe. Which is uh, every, everybody should know this particular tune. Um, I'm going to be putting this one on um, on uh, YouTube. So so if you're here on YouTube, uh, make sure you um, you click the the like and subscribe buttons um, to get us some more some more viewers. And um, I'd like to get started um, actually in the. Um, Sky Collection. The Sky Collection uh, link is in the description below, so uh, you can you can find it there. Hi, Jean. It's good to see you. Um, so we are going to start actually on page forty-one in the Sky Collection, the top of the page. Um, the original um, manuscript page is page twenty-six, and this is a. This is actually one of my favorite Strathspeys, um, Highland Whiskey. It's a it's a great it's a great Strathspey, and um, I'll play it the way that I play it first. Uh, you can follow along with the, with the music, but um, we can. Um, uh, I'll show you what they what they mean with some of the some of the things in in the um, collection, what they're talking about. So, um, that further further ado, we're on page forty one and uh, page 26 of the original collection, and um, playing Highland Whiskey. The Strats Bay. So here's this. Great, great stress bay. Can't can't go wrong with this tune. It's a wonderful tune. Um, I know it says Highland whiskey, but you can play it in either the Highland style, or you could play it also in the Northeast style. This one actually has some good spots for that. Um, so hi, MJ and Mojo. Good to see you guys. Um, so <clears throat> you'll notice that when I played it, I did not play the the burl at the beginning. You can. There's no no reason not to. You could start. You could start that way, like that. But I actually start it with, um, with a snap. So, so that's how I start it. So. So instead of the burl, I'm actually putting a snap in there. Okay, 
you can, like I said, you can do the bro. Like, or you can just play a quarter note. Okay, so there's lots of different things that you can do with it. Um, and it's a very, very powerful tune. Um, and if you look at the last measure of the first line, um, you've got that. So what I do is I do a down bow and then I, I do a, um, an up bow with the next three note. Okay, like that. But when I get the up bow, I do another up bow. So I'm ending on an up bow. So I'm ready for the... Okay, so the B section... I do it. I do it opposite. I actually hold the first note, almost like if I'm doing the the sixteenth note run down the instead of going. Okay, I know what it says in the music, but I, I actually flip that one around. D da dum ba bum because that is the beginning of the phrase, and I like to kind of keep the first note kind of longer to emphasize it a little bit. So. Okay, so let's try this tune together, okay? I'll do it a little bit slower. Ready? One, two, three. So there's Highland Whiskey. Now the way that you would play this actually as a um, as a Northeast style, for instance, is you would go So you can see where I'm putting those arrow strokes. It's, it's down, up, 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 down. So down, up, 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 down. Down, up, 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 down. So down, up, 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 down. So three ups in a row. So that's the that's the arrow stroke. But this this one works really well with the, the Highland style. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, so that works really nicely. So Highland Whiskey, great tune. I love that tune. It's one of my fa favorite um, go-to Strathspeys. You can't go wrong with 
Highland Whiskey. Now the second tune on our list is <clears throat> Duns Dings Ah. It's on page 31 of the PDF, which is page 16 of the original. So 31. And it's uh, down the page a bit. It's the last tune on the page, I believe. Uh, yeah. And um, I looked up the name of this tune. And I found some interesting stuff out about this tune. Uh, this tune is actually um, referring to a town in Scotland called Duns, D-U-N-S, which it's called Duns now. And um, apparently the term dunce, like not being very smart, uh, comes from um, that the name of the town. It's um, um, apparently some famously unintelligent person <laughs> came from that area. Um, and it... Um, so it it's got some interesting look look up the tune um on um online uh and i think the session if you go to the session.com um it's got a good uh, ex explanation of that particular tune in the session um and it's got a it, it's also got a good link uh to a, a nice a nice uh, um fiddler playing this tune and it's a great reel it's um it's um, so it's just um, I, to me it has a similarity to um, the High Road to Linton as well. So here's here's this tune. So there's Duns Dings Ah, and um, it's a it's a it's a great great reel. Let's let's break it down a little bit. Um, so make sure that when you're going back down to the G natural, that you're getting a good G natural. So that's just kind of goes it goes back and forth um between mixolydian and uh a major so So what I'm doing bowing wise, so I'm going uh, down, up, down, up. So um, I'm actually slurring. So I'm um, in the first measure, I'm going down, up, down, up, 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 down, up. Okay. So I'm, I'm slurring those three notes together, the G, uh, the G sharp to the A to the E. Like that, so. And if you wanna do that, I don't really like separating the two E's like that. I like to 
Let's slur it all together. I'm going down bow on the B section and then I pick up the E. And then so the last A in the in that first um, measure of the B section is going up bow and then I pick up the okay so if you watch what I'm doing on the C natural into the into the B three notes again so I'm this is a really good example of using groups of three when you're um, when you're doing your um, when you're doing your slurs, but this time I'm I'm definitely going across the um, the the measure line, and that that gives you that really cool um, that that cool sort of off kilter feel with this tune. It's a really really fun tune to play. So let's play this slowly together. Ready? One, two, ready. One. a good tune I really like that tune a lot um, I'm like I said this week's uh, listings of tunes really really came through I think that um, so the next tune um, that we're on the list to do is a really nice Strathspey on page 143 124 in the original and um, this one really, um, I like this one a lot. Francis Sitwell, um, page 143, 143. Um, it's down the page after that big long uh, other strats. Is that a real? Yeah. Uh, Francis Sitwell, uh, Nathaniel Gautun in the key of B flat, which is okay. We don't have to worry too much about this. This one has a really nice, um, just a really nice, um, just over overall composition about it. Um, I think it's one of Nathaniel Gow's better strat space. So here's here's how I like to play it.
really, really nice, nice, nice tune. And the last note, I like to play with that open D. It makes it sort of a, um, kind of gives you the, uh, most of the, the, the B flat chord. So if, you, if you're going to construct a B flat chord, you start with a B flat. Okay. Okay. You start with a B flat and then you go to the next line up, which is the, um, the D. Okay. And then the next chord note would be the F natural. Okay, so there's your chord. Okay, but we can't play really the F. I guess we could play the. We could play the F natural. I think it's a nicer tone to play the other note in the in the chord, the D. Okay. That that's one what's one reason I like the keys of B flat and E flat because the very last note that you play you can always play that nice and it just kind of opens it's a nice open tone like the E flat do the open G underneath it it's a really really nice way to end the piece um, so let's look at this tune um, I think this one really um, I use a lot of vibrato with this one. Um, this one has um, has some really nice uh, places where you can kind of bring your vibrato uh, right there. So put some nice vibrato there. Right there. Like that. Okay. So the the first measure as written here has no snaps, but um, as you've heard me say before, um, I really like to establish in the very first measure that you're listening to a Strathspey. So I like to put a snap in the very first measure whenever I'm playing a Strathspey. That's it's kind of a thing that I like to do, just to give people that that hook you know because especially if you're playing for dancers they want to know where to put um the stress bay uh, hop so if you're if you start that's a long time to wait for a snap okay that's a, that's that's at least a couple steps in. So if you start, okay, just straight off. If you see the um, the the little um, the little um, the ornament notes there, I'm actually doing I'm staying within the mode here. I I'm not a big fan of that um, that F sharp there. I would rather kind of stay within the mode than, than throwing uh, an accidental in there, honestly. Okay, F natural. Okay. I'm basically I'm holding on to um, especially in the second ending I'm holding on to the F natural like that okay 
So, and so this one, uh, use, use plenty of bow and, uh, again, holding that first note of the, um, long, uh, of the 16th note run. And the ornament notes, actually, I'm, it's doing a hammer on there. And uh, hammer on is simply going from the lower note and then bringing the next note up. I'm actually doing it fairly slowly. Um, I'm not. I'm not doing like that. I'm actually. You're. You're gonna hear it. So that those are a, a few little nuances that I'm putting into this. So let's play this together. Ready? One, two, ready. At the very end, you see the little doodly thing that they've got written there, the sort of sideways S. Um, that's like that. So you're starting on the B flat, down, back. So the B flat, A, B flat, C, and then uh, the B flat. So you're going to D dot, D dum. You can start actually on the C. So any of those combinations, so starting on the B, going up to the C and back down again, or starting on the C. But if you do it fast enough and then end on the B flat, that's where you're going for. Okay, I did two different ways just then and it sounds very similar, okay? Okay, so here we are. Well, Nathaniel Gow was a Northeastern player. Um, and you could put some, you could put some arrow strokes in this one. If you, if you watch carefully what I'm doing. You can you can put a few arrow strokes in here. Uh, I it is definitely a northeast um, piece because that's where he was from. But um, but yeah, that's um. It doesn't have the sort of typical, you know, like Miss Lyle things jumping out at you uh, as being a northeast. Um, and this this one sounds a lot more like a. Um, uh, no, well, you you don't have to play um, arrow strokes all the time. In fact, if I were to play this, I might just do uh, one or two arrow strokes, like in the first 
maybe one in the first bar and one in the um in the middle bar of the A section. But really there's no there's not a lot of other places to put the arrow stroke. So the arrow stroke is indicative of the northeast style, but it doesn't mean that every single time it that you hit a tune that you're going to have to use one. Um and that's just you you got to kind of look at the tune itself. You can't really say in order to be northeast style you have to play arrow strokes all the time. That's that's not a true statement. Uh, you it's just one of the aspects. Um I think slightly slower um playing style and also um a little smoother um like in the the first ending um going okay so that that's sort of an idea da da dee dee da 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 kind of thing so hope that answers the question um hold on what's the next tune here Okay, the next tune is, I have it listed as a real slash Strathspey because it's often played as either. Um, I usually play this as a reel. It's called the reel of Talach, but um, we're on page 18, or the third page of the original. So page 18, or page 3 of the um, original manuscript. And if we go down to this, the reel of Talach, um, I like this tune as a reel, okay? Now there's, um, J. Scott Skinner wrote uh, two pages of very um, violinistic variations on this, very sort of... Um, you know, violin-y kind of things, um, which is a lot of fun if you if you get a, it's in the uh, the Scottish Violinist. Um, I don't know which original S Scott Skinner it's in, but it's definitely in the, uh, the Scottish Violinist, or if you have my edition, we used to call it the Pink Violinist because the cover was pink, uh, but now they've changed it to light blue, so it's now the light blue violinist, but I still, I think everybody still calls it pink violinist but the reel of talk I'm gonna play it as a reel first so so That's that's a reel of Talach as a reel. Now let me play it as it's written here as a Strathspey. So So you kind of have to slow it down a little bit to put the snaps in there. And um, there's a lot of different things that you can do this. Now, if you look down at the bottom, it says the reel of Talach should be played first as a Strathspey and then as a reel, followed by Stumpy, the deal among the tailors, a welcome combination to enthusiastic, enthusiastic dancers. Okay, so the reel of Talach should be played first as a Strathspey. So Strathspey and then reel. And then you play Stumpy. Now I assume they mean play Stumpy as a reel because Stumpy is another one of these tunes that is often played as a Strathspey. Um, Deal Among the Tailors is pre pretty much always a reel. I've, I've 
um, I don't know many people that have ever played that tune as actually a, um, a stress bay. But uh, that's actually a really good combination of tunes if you think about it. Um, so because uh, uh, and uh, I'll I'll do that I'll do that. Uh, That's, that's the set that they're talking about doing. And um, so you you would uh, kind of slowly get faster, 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 faster. And that's that's a lot of fun, actually, if you're doing um, a, a, like a an eight, eight some reel or something like that. So let's let's look at the, the reel of Tullach. Um, If you play what's actually written here, you're you're gonna get a really nice nice sound. Okay. <laughs> um, if you're gonna ro roll up like that in the second measure, I actually go up on the B. That's a nice way to end it too, just off like that. If you want to end it with a, the A chord, okay. And again, like I said before, if you're doing you're doing an A chord, start with the A, next line up, or then um, next next up would be C sharp, and then next next is the E is the E. I'm playing the E below. I'm playing that. Okay. So that's that's the chord I end with. But I I I wait for it. So if you listen to all, all the It's a lot more dramatic that way. So it just could just wait for that, okay? So let's try this together. And when I'm playing it as a reel, I just flatten everything out. I don't do the dotted rhythms. Um, and da 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 And you could even play this as a march too, if you'd like. Uh, that's absolutely fine. One, two, run out.
Good. Now, that part, I'm um, I'm doing a, a pull off. I'm I'm playing the D into the C sharp. So I get that sort of um, pipey characteristic. Just like that, okay? So it gives it a little bit more of a pipey character. So Reel of Tulla, great tune. If you if you feel like having some real fun. Break out your J. Scott Skinner edition of this and and go through the uh, the variations are a lot of fun and they're really not that difficult they they're just really flashy um, which you might um, expect from our friend uh, J. Scott Skinner <laughs> so, old James Scott Skinner Johann Sebastian Skinner so. The next tune is Miss Dale, which is a Strathspey, page 28. As I recall, this is a sweet little, a sweet little tune, page 28. Um, after the Ficats, Miss Dale, and the key of A. Uh, I, I don't know who SDS is. I looked it up. I, ca I can't figure out who SDS is. If anybody knows who SDS is, um, um, maybe, a th maybe it's a Skinner. Uh, it looks like a Skinner from all the triplet stuff in the end. Who knows? But um, it's not, it's not JS, S, you know, so we'll see. So here's Miss Dale. This one to me screams northeast because look at the first measure. You got nice places for those arrow strokes. I would do the um those two B's in the, as a as a pushed Boeing too. In order to finish this, you kind of have to mess around with that last measure a bit. I, I, I don't know if you heard me do it. But I just wind my way up to the A. So, so to just end it, okay? So, but it's, it's a, this is a, a very nice little tune. And 
um, a good a good one to practice your arrow strokes. So go. So down, up, 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 like that. So down, up, 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 down, up, 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 down. So let's let's try this one together. Ready? One, two, ready. Miss Dale, Miss Dale, who knows, I think it's in the Skinner family, that's just a, that's a guess, I would guess that, so let's take a look at the next tune, the next tune is a hornpipe, yes, and it's the famous one, the famous college hornpipe, page 209. Page 209. Um, am I right? Nope. No, 204. I'm sorry. 204. 204. It's down the page a bit. The College Hornpipe. You, you all know this tune. It's a very famous tune. Okay, you know this tune. Um, the Scots like to do this in B flat. I think to get that last. Most other folks tend to play this in the key of D, okay? Um, but let's look at how to play play this. I like this. This this is where the term college style comes from, the college hornpipe style, okay? So it's like... So you're doing it just straight, okay? You could do it, uh, you can do it the swing style.
Yes. D this is this is like the Popeye. This is the Popeye theme song. Oh, go, 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 go. Yes. This is definitely. And actually it is. It's in it's used in Popeye. It's used in any sort of nautical thing uh that's been used anywhere. Um it's 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 part of the SpongeBob SquarePants um um you know genre tunes too it's it's in all of those cartoons um but strangely enough it's not called the sailor's hornpipe some people do call it the sailor's hornpipe it's technically not the sailor's hornpipe it's called the college hornpipe and then it's a very there's a very interesting version of it that i found in a um um uh, a collection called the litton collection l-i-t-t -T. E N um, William Lytton was a fiddler for the Royal Navy and um, ended up becoming a merchant sailor up in New England. And his uh, he had a little book of of tunes that he kept all of his favorite tunes in. And College Hornpipe is one of those tunes. It was published in like uh, I'm not even gonna say published. It was just a handwritten thing, and it, he he dated it about 18. 16 or something like that so the so the very earliest um uh sort of early united states um merchant sailor kind of he used to be in the royal navy and then he ended up working being, being a merchant sailor for um f for the new england trade and his his spellings are fun are, are fascinating he actually spells this instead of college it's spelled like we would spell collage collage the college um which kind of gives you a clue on their accent college 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 the college so let's try this and and keep it light um and and like most hornpipes it's got that at the end dum bum bum at the end so G, I play an E natural there. Oh. They play, they don't have it written down as a, a, an E natural. I think that that is a misprint. I think. That's what I usually play, and that's what most versions do they go okay so let's try that again let's together one two a one oh before we do that let me talk about the um the the ornaments it has a Of course, you can't do a trill there. It's just not enough time, but do something there. The easiest thing to do is a tap or a hammer on and sort of half. I think that would be called. Um, yeah, the naturals are in the bass line. Yes, they are. I didn't even look at the bass line. Thank you, Wojo, for looking at the bass line. Um, but. So what I'm doing actually is I'm I'm using the um, pickup notes. Okay, so put some sort of an ornament there, 
wherever it says to do something. Um, you don't have to do the, the ornaments that it tells you to do this. It's a good place to put them. So one, two, one, two, three. <laughs> College hornpipe. So that's a standard tune. You gotta you gotta learn that one. But if you're gonna learn it to play along with other people, learn it in the key of D or G, because that's the key most people learn it in. But it's nice to know it in a couple different keys. I like it in this key because of the because of the E chord at the end, the the B flat chord. I mean. At the end, it's very, very nice. Um, so, what's the next tune? Let's see on the list: college hornpipe, and then oh, an air. And this is a aldevalach, aldevalach, or or the muir among the heather. Uh, this is a very, very well-known tune. So it's on page one eighty-eight, and. Um, I need to shrink this down just a tweak because I can't see all of the music. Is this all the music? Yes, no, that's all the music. Um, it says very slow. Um, and it's, it's a lovely, it's a lovely tune. Um, and I, a lot of people play this for competitions. Um, and um, if you notice, it does actually have some um, some clues as to how to play it. It's got some it's got some crescendos and decrescendos. It's got some uh, it's got some um, dynamics marked in here and there. So it's it's a good it's it's a very nice. So I'm going to play the whole thing through, and um, and uh, if you can kind of follow along with that. And uh, I'm gonna kind of play it the way that I like to play it. I, I might I might follow the the music, um, but um, maybe some. And the DC down there means that you play the um, the first two lines again, is what. But you don't you don't play the um, you don't play the the repeats. That's that's sort of the rule. So.
So there's a lot of music there, a lot of music to do. And notice I, I didn't just stay with the metronome. I, I, was taking, I was taking the phrases and I was stretching them. Let's just look at the very first line, just the first line. Even though it's just those two measures, how much I was stretching things. And I was also doing some, some dynamic variation, even within, within the measure. If you, if you notice, I mean, you, you can look at, at the notes and it kind of goes up and it goes down. It goes up and then it goes down. So there's a swell in the middle of that, um, in the middle of that measure. So... Up more. Even more. Big here. Then smaller. It's, a, it's actually written in this one. They tell you to come back to piano there, which is an interesting thing to do. Do that from out of there, that's really nice. Okay, so that that's really there's some really good things in there to give you an idea of how to play it. And then um, <clears throat> once you get to the variation, be careful with this one. Don't, when, once you get to that one, one of the most common things that I hear people do is, that, and then they start going tick, 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 tick. Da 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 So just kind of push those, the, those nice, you know, important notes out and hold them a little bit. Um, and that's, that's really um, the key to playing something like this in air really nicely. Um, and that... Um, now, we've got some interesting... Um, yeah, the pianissimo part is gorgeous. I love it there. Um, now, that second measure of the one, two, three, fourth line, you've got some new notes happening here. So you've got... Make a big deal out of that. That's, that's a very different part. So... dotted rhythms kind of exaggerate the dee da dum ba dee da dum ba da da dee da 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 so let's um let's just play down um let's not do the repeats this time uh let's just uh play um line one two three four one two okay just to give an idea all right so everybody together okay, one two
it's a it's a great tune and another another one this a lot of these tunes that we're doing this week are are standards that you really really should consider putting into your permanent repertoire it's it's just one of those go-to tunes and it's just I, I can never hear that one enough it's, it's just a gorgeous piece of music um and it's old it's an old tune um let's see here um the next tune is uh, lady anderson on page 70 uh the original manuscript is page 53 but the pdf is 70 70 uh, Lady Anderson, uh, James Scott Skinner. Um, so here's this tune. approachable Scott Skinner reel um honestly this it 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 sits into your fingers really nicely I like the way it it goes it goes together now if you can't do the re the burl you can always put a tap there Or some some sort of an ornament. A, a roll would be fun there too. You understand how I'm doing that? I'm going. So I'm just rolling down to the A instead of doing the burl. So burls are fun. Burls are obviously appropriate here because I, that's what's written here. But um, there's lots of different things that you can do there instead of that. I would usually I say you can always play a, um, a quarter note there, but you know I don't know. I mean, you wouldn't lose time that way, but it's just not very interesting. And the, the point is that you want to kind of make it more interesting. So I would, um, I would tend to go to some sort of an ornament there. Um, you don't have to do the burl, just some sort of an ornament. Um, so. keep going back to this basic style it's a good thing to um and I'm not telling you you have to do this this way all the time but it's a good habit to get yourself into it's just a nice bowing in general if you look at um the B section the very first the very first measure I would go down up 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 down up 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 okay And then Okay, 
Okay, so you can really, um, you can get that da 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 da. So it it gives you a nice rolling feel. Um, can you do this? Sure. A any combination of those things, whatever is comfortable to you and whatever sounds good to you, is a, is a good is a good um, way to approach this. And um, he's got. He's got this um, dotted rhythm there. Um, when you're going really fast, it's difficult to get the D a D a da 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 D a da 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 da. da. Again, try the ornaments. If you don't like them, throw them out. Okay, so let's try this together. One, two, a one, two, three. Lady Anderson by James Scott Skinner. Um, good, good tune. Very, very nice. Um, straight, pretty straightforward. Um, real. Um, it's a real in, in D. Um, a lot of, a lot of times we're looking for tunes in D because uh, a lot of the people that we play with, like, like the key of D. And so this is this is one of them. But you've got some, you've got some non D stuff going on there. Um, like the G, well, you got a G natural there, but it's supposed to have a G natural. So, um, so let's go to the next tune. Um, Lord Alexander Gordon Strathspey. Goodness gracious, this is a good tune. Um, page 40. The original manuscript is on page 25, but I'm doing the PDF, so I'm going to page 40 page 40 and this is a powerful Strathspey. Let me play this for you. Alexander Gordon. This tune is uh, William Marshall. Um, this is one of his best, actually. I like this is um, really when you think about William Marshall. This this tune really kind of captures him, except for the fact that it's in the key of A. Um, a lot of his 
or in the key of E flat and stuff like that. But this one is really, and in order to get that, that, I would suggest that you put your first finger on both the A and um, the G and the D strings. So you're getting that kind of a sound. So if you, so you don't have that open D, if you accidentally hit it, it kind of wrecks the whole um, chord. So if you're doing, if you're doing an A chord, you're playing the, okay, you're playing the A, and then the next, the next note up is the C sharp, okay, and then, and then the E, okay. So if you can, if you can put one of those. I'm suggesting putting the E there to get to the A. So you're playing that. You're playing a f uh, all basic, basically fifths. And it's a lot smarter than having something something like that happen. That just kind of wrecks the whole. Um, that doesn't fit in the key in the key um, of the of the chord. So. And you can even start with both of them together. And this is a good one to do the arrow stroke. So. Same thing here. So this, this one is full, 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 smack dab full of arrow strokes. And this is, if you really want to impress people with your arrow strokes, this tune is excellent for that sort of thing. So yes, it is a Northeast style. I really don't think this lends itself well to the Highland style. I really don't. It, this one is is just so ingrained in the Northeast style. Uh, just the way that Marshall wrote and everything about it. To me, just, just this one screams Northeast. So. Okay. Also, make sure... Now, in this particular, in the B section, the second line, uh, the, the second measure of the second line, in when I'm doing that um, arrow stroke, I do a little a doodly in there as I'm pushing. So you can go like that, kind of holding the chord. Okay, and again, when you're doing those triplets, the triplets really. Um, I recommend playing them more with a jig style rhythm. Da di di da di di da, and start off with that rhythm. And if you want to flatten it out later, that's fine. But don't start off with da 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 di 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 da 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 da. So instead of going, 
I like to establish the jig feel. And you can you can flatten it out toward the end of the run. That's fine. I don't I personally don't like starting with the with a flat triplet da 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 if you like it that way, that's up to you, but I just personally don't. I don't I don't like playing it that way. Okay. So let's try this tune. Um um with the um with the arrow strokes and everything like that. Okay, so let's go. One, two, ready, and that Lord Alexander Gordon keep in mind remember um, William Marshall worked he was the prefect uh, basically like kind of like the butler I guess you might call him to Lord Gordon um, the Duke of Gordon who was the uh, chief of the Gordon clan so um, so he actually he worked for he worked for them for most of his his life uh, William Marshall was a very interesting fellow. He could do all sorts of things. He was a polymath, and he was also able to... He was a clock maker. He could build clocks, and one of the clocks that he made was able to obviously tell the time, but also it, it told you the um, phases of the moon and also uh, could predict, uh, apparently, like eclipses and stuff like this crazy crazy uh, clockwork and he was very very brilliant about this stuff and he and Neil Gow were constantly uh, in this sort of musical battle against each other so um, one more tune and uh, on page 27 it's a pipe reel page 27 and this is the last tune that we're going to be doing it's called Dal Downies and um, it's a pipe reel, page 27. And um, it's a, being a pipe reel, it's, it says it's in the key of A, but then they make all the Gs natural. So that just makes sense because those are the only notes that the pipes have. So let me uh, play this one here for you. So there's the tune, um, and um, the little asterisk says it's from the Ross Collection. The Ross Collection is a collection of pipe music. It's a it's a pipe, um, I think it's a pipe tutor. Um, so again. Down, up, 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 down, up, 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 da, 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 dee, da, da. And 
if you want to do this and uh, get, a, get a, a really neat pipe sound to it, whenever you get um, repeated notes, you can tap those. So I would highly suggest um, if you're ever playing with bagpipers, kind of give them this one and see if they can, can do something with this one. So let's play this one together and um, and then I'll bid my farewell. So one, two, a one, two, three. One. So thank you again, everybody, for joining in. This was a really great ten tunes. I think this this week was a was a good selection. So thank you, Mr. Random Number Generator, for finding these for us. And um, again, thank you all for helping support this. Um, I do very much appreciate it. Uh, all of you folks who have been sending donations, it's been it's been wonderful. And again, this is uh, going up on YouTube as well. So um, if you liked what you saw, please smash the like button and the subscribe button. And um, that helps keep this going as well. So I'll see you folks next week. Enjoy and um, stay uh, safe if you're on the eastern seaboard. we got a hurricane coming up the coast. So bye-bye now.